Yes, I'm back looking at more of the fat wheel e-bikes. I really do like them because they're fun bikes with those big, fat, spongy tires that you can pretty much ride over anything. And rough terrain like where I am now, they just soak it up these kind of tires because they're running low PSI. So 26 inch rims with this model here, and it is the XF800. And it's from a company called Bazaar, my first time reviewing any of their bikes. So we have a battery that is removable, lockable. It's 11 amp hours, which should give us a range of up to 50 kilometers. I can give you a bit of a spoiler here. It's more like 40 kilometers. 160 millimeter mechanical disc brakes. Yes, sadly mechanical. They're not hydraulic, which would of course be better. And then with the mid-mount motor system, it's 500 watts. It's a truck run brand of mid motor. Normally I see Bifang with these. So we have seven speeds with our gears. The bike's weight is pretty heavy as you can imagine. It is 36 kilos, so it's certainly no lightweight. It does have a front shock with a little bit of travel here, but it is a no-name brand front shock. So I'll run you through just a few other things about this particular bike. So the seat, it's wide, it's comfortable, spongy, height adjustable with a quick release. And it does cater to ride heights of, riders, sorry, heights of 160 to 190 centimeters. Now the brakes are probably my biggest complaint now after riding about 52 kilometers so far. They need a lot of bedding in. They're pull mechanical 160 millimeter disc brakes and they're really not that brilliant. I will be upgrading these if I hang on to them. Now they are a speed brand of brake and not a brand that I will definitely be <laughs> looking for. So you can see we've got reflectors and we do have, of course, those really cool fat tires here. So they're 26 by four inches wide. The brand of them is Chow Yang. Now I've seen a lot of them around. They're either Kenda or Chow Yang, typically with these bikes. Now this is what is different here, a mid motor setup. So this one is a truck run brand. Never heard of them before. Normally it's Bifang. Bifang seem to be pretty good. And this one so far is fine. So 500 watts, it's got plenty of power. And then of course it does put a little bit more wear on our chain and everything else, which I'll get onto shortly. Pedals are these plastic ABS style ones. Now they seem to be holding up okay. I haven't had any major issues with them. And this is our battery. So the battery is a removable 13 amp hour battery. So you can lock it into place. That is where the key is. So when you want to pop it out you can simply put the key in there, pops up, you remove it. Charging port is right here. And you're looking at a charge time of the typical six to eight hours there. There's even a little status gauge here. So if it's not in the bike, compress that. It lights up some little LEDs inside, which are a little difficult to see. Now the welds look reasonably good. The frame, to me, doesn't show any areas of weakness, no cracks, and I've been throwing it around. And I just go around the other side here to show you that we've got the Shimano Tourney. Okay, this is super common. I see a lot of this, and I don't know if it's gonna be up to the job. Really, all this extra strain and stress that the motor's gonna be putting on this cassette here. So it is the Tony TZ seven speed. And here's our front crank, which spins separately if you just use the accelerator when you are riding along. Now the front shock here, not good. It's got a nice bit of travel to it. It actually goes right up to here, you can see, with the little oil mark there. So it's almost bottoming out pretty much. And I've noticed that this mud guard has actually struck up here, causing it to make a bit of noise causing it to actually bend down, so I have to keep pulling it up all the time. So I'd probably take those mud guards off it. Now the front here, the hub is not a quick release hub. I guess it doesn't matter too much because we do have these four inch wide fat tires. The headlight at the front is a very standard one that I see a lot of on all of these Chinese e-bikes that I do typically cover. So it has a reflector, it's bright enough that it lights up the path ahead of you, but it's nothing amazing, nothing special. Now there should be a red tail light on the back here, but I didn't bother to use it because where it's positioned, the mud guard's actually going to be in the way. So these mud guards, they are made out of plastic and they tend to bang around a little bit. I don't really need them in this climate here, but of course if you live somewhere like in the UK where it rains a lot, you probably want to keep these on. Just to quickly show you how to remove that battery. So you just turn the key, pops up a little bit, and it simply lifts up and out. Okay, a little tricky to get out. 
and it's quite heavy because it is a 13 amp hour battery. Now I don't know the brand of cells that are within this. I hope they are Samsung or LG. Then installing it the same thing, a little tricky, clips into place, you hear that clip, and you just remove the key, it's already locked in, so no one can go along and steal it. So on the right hand side here, we have our accelerator. They are not lock grips, so these kind of spin around a bit. Our thumb selector for up and down gears from Shimano. It works well, we have this little cheap bell. Better than nothing, I guess. And then of course we do have our screen. Now I'll just power that on. The screen can be made out in direct sunlight. There's your battery gauge. You can see I've done now, well, almost 54 kilometers. My first battery run was 38 kilometers before I managed to burn right through it completely. So tapping the button here, you can cycle through your trip and odometer, that is it. And you'll see we have our pedal assist levels here. So we've got our plus and minus buttons here, power on. This is the front brake and the levers feel okay. Although I already need to adjust these because I've been pulling on these brake levers so hard that it's almost touching the grip now. So they will need to be adjusted. Of course, you've got the little adjustments right here. And onto my right test now of the XF800. So we've got that kickstand. It's doing a good job. It's holding it up just fine. It hasn't rattled and it's able to hold up that 36 kilos. It's a very heavy bike. So it can be lowered right down the seat to cater for people out of 160 centimeters tall up to 190. So that's good. This frame design is uh, that, that you can of course lower that seat right down. Now, as soon as you start pedaling, you get that power pretty much uh, straight away, which is great. It doesn't seem to take too long to sense that you're pedaling, you're moving, and it gives you that power. Now the gear changes, I haven't had any problems with them at all. They seem to be just fine. You can hear the motor a little bit as I ride along. Mid-mount motor in this one, so it is different. So a bit of a tip here, when you change gears, don't pedal. Stop pedaling when you change the gear and then start. This way you take a bit of that stress, the tension off the chain and you should be able to increase the lifespan of it a bit more. I'm always worried with the mid-engine mount e-bikes, especially with this kind of low-end Shimano, if it's gonna be able to hold up to the extra wear and tear a mid-range motor puts on it, especially on the chain and the rear cassette. Top speed of the bike, you're looking around about, just under my own pedal power, about 34 kilometers per hour. Now, if you do have it unlocked, it'll keep powering you right up to about 40, 45. But the way it is geared with the seventh gear, I'm just pedaling as fast as I can now downhill. I'm able to then get it up to around about 40, but I'm running out of gearing really. I can't go any faster than this because my legs are spinning around so quick. Still, it feels fast enough for a bike like this. So the bike for pulling out in intersections is good because we do have the accelerator here and because it's all through the gearing, make sure you're in the right gear, of course. I'm in first gear here. So as I pull away, I just don't even need a pedal. I can just use that accelerator and it's got enough torque to do that. And again, that tip that when you change gears, try not to pedal, try not to put the stress or accelerate at the same time as you're changing those gears too, is a good idea for that chain. And you can go along here quite happily. So it is a different riding style compared to the rear hub motors. The mid motor, a lot of people do like because of course it is driving those gears. Climb test now, so this is about 25 degrees. I'm in the second gear here, but I am in the pedal assist level five of five, so the maximum here, and it's a 500 watt motor. Now, going up this, not really a problem at all. For me in the second gear, this is very easy. I can probably change gears, in fact I will. Now onto the third gear. And what if I stop pedaling? I'll just use the accelerator now. It's able to do it. But I'm slowing down to around about 10 kilometers per hour now. But if I start pedaling, I'm able to maintain a much higher speed here of about 14, well, 16 actually now that I'm doing as I climb all the way up to the top of this steep climb. Brake test now. So we have a heavy bike. It's about 36 kilos. And from this post here doing about 30, full on brakes. Oh. That is a little longer than I like 
that it takes this bike to stop due to the weight, due to the fact there are mechanical disc brakes, 160 millimeter ones. If there was one thing I would do to this bike, if I was gonna hang on to it, I would definitely upgrade these brakes probably to 180 millimeter and go with a hydraulic cable pull, but hydraulic piston, like the zoom ones you can get. So I've made it up to the top here. It's a very steep climb. Now I did run into a bit of a problem. It gave me an error 10 on the screen it flashed and I seem to have lost all power. What happened I think is because I was using a pedal assist level five on the whole climb up, it overheated. The motor was scorching hot. I let it cool down for two minutes and now everything seems to be fine again. So I'll report back or I'll put a comment in this video if I keep getting that same error. Now I'm just gonna ride it downhill a little bit to test what it's like off road. So with those four inch wide fat wheels and 26 inch rims here, it's quite good at soaking up all of these kind of rough little bumps and things. Now the front shock I have noticed has a couple of times, it just did it then, strikes the mud guard because of the travel, that front little mud guard, and that's a little off putting. But going over all these rocky bits, because of these nice fat wheels, it's not actually too bad if you're going to be riding down some rough trails here. But you want to get that seat post as low as possible, of course. Now let's see how it handles climbing up the more rocky stuff. This is very steep, so I don't imagine I'm going to have a very good time here. I'm in the first gear, so pedaling straight away. And I guess if you keep on top of the power there, your speed, you can plow through everything like I'm doing right now here and it seems to be working all right. It's a little rough going and that suspension again making a little bit of noise. I think it's the mudguard striking but it's climbing actually surprisingly well up this rough stuff here. So it climbs a lot better than it looks definitely. Okay, so the range of it, they say they can get up to 50 kilometers. Now, I managed to get 38 kilometers out of my first charge, and I wore the battery out completely. I didn't take it easy on it either. I was going around this area here, I did quite a few climbs, and I was on the pedal assist level five, one of five, so I burnt through it quite quickly. I don't think that was too bad considering how heavy the bike is, and it's a 13 amp hour battery. Now, if it was a 19 amp hour battery, that range would be terrible. I'd be expecting quite a bit more. So if you do take it easy on the battery, you ride over 25 kilometers per hour, you should be able to see a lot more. I would say maybe around 40 kilometers, 45, is the kind of range you're looking at out of this bike considering it is quite heavy. So the pros of the bike, the fat wheels, nice and smooth, they're comfortable, they're spongy, you can ride around on rough terrain that maybe you otherwise wouldn't. Climbing performance is good, top speed is not bad. Now if you unlock it, you can get up to about 40, 45 kilometers per hour, but I have it locked at uh, 25, and that seems to be fine for the kind of riding that I am doing. Seven speed gears, all right, they seem to work fine. They're entry level sh from Shimano, but I'm a little concerned about the longevity of the drivetrain and the chain on this because it's gonna have a lot more stress under it, a lot more load under it because it is a uh, mid-motor setup here, of course, with this e-bike. So it's driving the crank at the front, using that chain a lot and putting a lot of tension and load on it. So just keep an eye on it after at least a year or so, check to see if there's any wear on the rear cassette, see if the chain is starting to loosen up a bit and get that changed. I hope it's gonna be up to the job, but I do have my doubts. The front shock kind of isn't up to the job because it has already pretty much bottomed out on me. I've had the mudguard strike up against here, made a bit of noise, the mudguard striking the front tire. So that is one of the cons of this bike. The other is the braking performance. I know I rant on about this a lot in my e-bike reviews, but a lot of companies are just overlooking and putting very cheap brakes on, especially heavy, powerful, fast e-bikes. They need to step up and have decent brakes. So the brakes on this, the pads, uh, which they say on their website, like resin pads or something like that. Uh, they took a very long time to bed in. Now I've ridden about 51 kilometers now, and I was not happy with how they were performing, especially in the first 20, 30 kilometers. They're a little bit better now after I've bed them in, but still I find myself really pulling hard on the levers sometimes just to bring this bike to a stop safely. And I'm not happy with them. So I would upgrade these brakes if you're gonna be hanging onto this bike 180 millimeter and go for maybe hydraulic piston ones, but cable pull is a very easy and cheap upgrade. You can get zoom ones out there 
Uh, I don't know the model norm, number off the top of my head, but you see them all over AliExpress and it's very easy to do that. Screen is nice and clear. Overall, it's not a bad bike at all. It's just the weight, the suspension and the brakes is what's dragging this one down a little bit there, but it is super fun with these nice big fat wheels, so spongy and just really cool to ride around on. I just love how they handle everything you throw at them. They're a little bit noisy, but I kind of actually like that about them. So there we go. That is the full story of the Bazaar XF800 mid-mount motor e-bike.